Starting us off in at number 10 is cast members who get to experience the rides after dark. And by get to, I mean have to. They're absolutely forced to. Well, apparently some of these rides are absolutely 100% haunted, especially it's a small world. I remember I was stuck in that ride one time and I wanted to absolutely kill myself because it was so annoying, it was on repeat, it's so repetitive. Well, multiple cast members have reported seeing the little animated dolls blink or appear in entirely different places long after that they've been unplugged and switched off for the night. Honestly, there's just something about the ride that creeps me out and a reason why I just won't go on this ride ever again. In at number 9 is the poor employee who had a little bit of a game with Walt Disney himself after he died. A bit of backstory, whenever Walt was at the parks, the staff would always make sure that the light in the window of the fire station was turned on to let everyone know, you know Walt's here, let's uh, be on our best behavior. Well once he died, they turned off the lights. But one day, a staff member was cleaning the room where the lamp was and they saw that it was turned on. She turned it off, turned around, and when she turned back, it was switched on again. This would freak me out. She again turned it off. I wouldn't do that. I would just run like crazy, not look back, put in my resignation, and I'd probably go work for um, Microsoft or something. Well, something inside her was telling her that Walt was letting her know that, hey, I'm, I'm still here. I'm still much alive in this park. Well since then the lights always stay on to let everyone know that Walt is looking down on the parks. So everyone there better be on their best behavior. Following up at number 8 is when a Disney employee noticed that there was a mysterious box chained to a lamp post. Anyone who's seen any type of crime shows know that if there's a mysterious package anywhere it might be a bomb and to clear the area and call 911. This employee jumped into action and did just that because the last thing anybody wants is an active bomb and in the happiest place on earth filled with excited kids and their families. Turns out thankfully it wasn't a bomb, it was just some family's lunch and they just didn't want to carry it around with them. But seriously guys I don't understand wanting to carry your lunch around. I mean at that point just go out and buy lunch in a restaurant, just go buy a turkey leg somewhere. Well I guess on this day it would save a lot of people a lot of stress. Okay next up at number 7 spot is the employee who had to help break up a fight that could have ended really poorly. Poorly. Apparently a group of 20 year olds were getting rowdy and started punching each other in the arms but one of them missed and ended up psh, punching a 12 year old girl right in the face. Is this real life right now? How do you mess that up? Which is well this is bad enough but imagine doing that and then realizing that the little girl's dad is right there. It's like psh, and then right behind her is, is this big dude. Well this guy he was actually 6 foot 4 over 300 pounds and really mad, like really mad. It, it literally took four security guards and two deputies to pull the dad off the guy who punched his daughter, but not after bloodying up himself. Number six today goes to a worker who might have told an exorcism at the haunted mansion. Apparently before the ride even opened up, an employee heard music coming from the walls of the seance room. Mysterious music is bad enough from any room, but a seance room? Especially when there are rumors that the spell book was a real one, which was once owned by witches. Well that is class A nope material for me. Instead of cleansing the place, this employee decided to just install speakers to drown out the noise, but I guess whatever helps you sleep at night, I guess. Halfway through, in at number 5 is a staff member who discovered the body of a man who had died in his hotel room. I guess cleaning staff must have found him, but it was apparent that he had taken his own life. The room's windows and entrance were covered by those pardon our dust signs. Uh, I've never seen that kind of sign before, like pardon, uh, we, we didn't clean this place, uh, don't mind it. <laughs> and there was an important meet and greet to distract people from the room as police arrived on the scene. No matter what I encountered in my life, I feel like finding someone else's body would probably be the scariest thing to happen. In at number 4 is the employee who had to stop a situation that could have ended a lot worse than it did. This group of drunk people were on the Dumbo ride with their infant when they decided that um, it would be a good idea to reenact the Lion King. Yeah, you guys know where I'm going with this one. You guys know what I'm talking about. 
Well, they took off the seatbelt of the kid and they held their hands like Rafiki did to Simba during the circle of life. Well, the ride operator emergency stopped the ride and the entire group was escorted out of the park and arrested as soon as they stepped out of the gates. So did they have to wait until they were completely out of the park to be arrested? Because I would try to resist and never leave. Like I would never try to cross that line of like Disney exit, Disney exit. Next up, number three is an employee who had to deal with a watery attack. Well, during a jungle cruise, everything was going pretty well until suddenly one lady entirely lost her cool at the guy sitting in front of her. Mind you, he hadn't done anything other than enjoy his ride because he's in the happiest place on earth. Well, she started to scream at him and then lunged at him, clawing his face and kicking him. The skipper on board had to fire four rounds from his pistol into the air to warn other boats, rush back to the dock and try to pull the lady off of the guy. Well, apparently half the people on board were trying to help as well. When medical and security arrived, they finally got her secured and into an ambulance. Turns out she was schizophrenic and hadn't taken her medication that day and unfortunately had an episode in the middle of the water. It's always sad when somebody has a mental illness that affects them like that. Like you're trying to enjoy your ride and all of a sudden you're having panic attacks, you're freaking out. And, but I can't even imagine how scary that would have been for staff and customers as well who may not be experienced with understanding what that person is going through. Number two today goes to an employee who had to deal with the aftermath of something truly disgusting. Apparently in line at one of the rides, a fully grown man decided to take a poop in the corner of uh, the pre-show, which is pretty damn disgusting, especially when you remember that Disney is filled with kids and kids are curious and they like to satisfy their curiosity by finding things and putting it in their mouth. Yeah, so one kid actually saw the poop and decided it was snack time. The mom rushed the kid to the staff washroom in a panic where the employees were just staring in shock. If I was the employee in that situation, I wouldn't do anything at all because I would just be in total shock. My mouth would just be like, like, is, is this real life right now? It, did that guy really take a and finally, in a number one spot is a cast member who met their tragic end at one of the shows back in 1974. 18 year old Deborah Gale Stone was working at the American Sings attraction at Disneyland at the end of the night. She got too close to the area of the stage by a moving wall and a stationary wall. And as the one wall moved, she got trapped between the two and it ended up being crushed. Nobody was in the theater with her, but the ride operator next door heard her screams and rushed to help. But unfortunately, they were too late. Eventually, the solid walls were replaced with, you know, breakable ones. Ones to prevent a tragedy like this. Ones to prevent someone getting squished. I don't know who thought of this. There should be like a fail safe or like pressure sensors. Like, you know how you have a garage door and something's underneath it. It would go and then all of a sudden stop because there are sensors. Well, they definitely should have had one in place. Well, it was rumored that Deborah now haunts the attraction and now can be heard telling others to be careful. Starting off this countdown, we have the lifeguards. So I came across this TikTok and apparently he used to be a lifeguard at Disney. This is what Disney throws in the water to test their lifeguards. But what they don't tell you is that the lifeguards are told that they have to be constantly watching the water as if somebody's purposely trying to drown their child because people apparently do that. Disney noticed that people would go there to drown their children on purpose so that they could sue Disney and they could get rid of their child at the same time. So Disney lifeguards are trained to look for that. That is absolutely horrifying if he's telling the truth. It must be super stressful being a lifeguard at Disney. Like their water parks and wave pools are always packed. It's so sad if that has actually happened. In our ninth spot, we have the deaths. And if you guys are liking this video so far, then make sure to give it a big thumbs up. You know the drill because it really helps us out. Also, if you haven't already, go check out the other parts of the series. So Disney is very, very protective of its image. It wants to maintain that it's a safe and family friendly place. So they claim that no one has ever died at their park, which is clearly false. Tons of accidents have happened at Disney World and Disneyland. Both visitors and workers have lost their lives at Disney, but their claim is 100% true. Now you're probably thinking, how is this possible? So it turns out what Disney does is when someone does die at the park, employees have to remove the body from the property before pronouncing them dead. That means no one technically died at the park, 
only outside of the park's gates. They do this all so that families feel safe coming there, because if no one dies there, then clearly it's super safe. But still, this is pretty sketchy if you ask me. In our eighth spot, we have the injuries. Now, if you work for Disney as one of the characters and you get injured on the job, well, guess what? You can't receive medical assistance until you're out of the public's eye. This is just another crazy rule that Disney has. You have to stay in character no matter what. They all do this to preserve the illusion of Disney and magic. I mean, how horrifying would it be if all of a sudden Mickey rips off his head and starts like gushing blood in front of kids? Now, one worker was told before accepting a job as Water Goofy on a Disney cruise, he had to agree that if for some reason he started drowning, he had to be carried away before lifeguards could remove his costume and perform CPR. So he could literally be dying in the costume and need medical attention right away, but Disney won't allow that. Moving on to number seven, we have the repairs. Ever notice how Disney is pretty much always in great condition? I mean, some of the rides are super old, but they don't look it. Well, according to a former Disney employee, every night workers go around the park touching up any and everything. During the day, the workers know if there's any graffiti anywhere in the park or if there's paint chipping anywhere. They write it down and let the night shift workers know and then they go around fixing it all. I mean, I just took in that I've never seen graffiti at Disney, and that's exactly why. But also, it's a very tedious job. They have to go around the full park and get it all done before the park reopens in the morning. Moving on to number six, we have the fire accident. So this next story comes from a Disney employee that worked as an outdoor vendor. One night while watching a fireworks show, Tinkerbell got stuck on the wire above the castle since she had been hoisted up because she was flying in the air. But her wire was stuck and she almost burned to death up there. There was a whole Indiana Jones portion of the show and in it they had large fireballs. Well, they couldn't stop the show to get Tinkerbell down, so they kind of just left her there and turned off her spotlight so no one could see what was going on, and then they prayed for the best. But like I said before, it's a risk you take while working for Disney. You know, you could be dying and they're not going to save your life if it interferes with their show. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the cursed ride. Believe it or not, but there is a ride at Disney that all workers believe is cursed. This is the Matterhorn. First off, this ride is responsible for the most fatal and non-fatal incidents. In 1964, a teen on the ride stood up in the bobsled and then died after being thrown out from the ride. Then another time the ride caught on fire, injuring a family in their sled. And another visitor died after she was launched out of her seat and then hit by another bobsled. More on this later. You think they would have fixed this ride after the first couple of deaths, but no, they blame it on a curse instead. They should just kind of look into the safety of that ride because I don't know if it's that safe. In our fourth spot, we have the death on Space Mountain. Okay, this one is pretty dark. So in 1979, a woman died on the Space Mountain ride. She was only 31 at the time. So basically after the ride was done, this woman didn't feel well at all but she couldn't get out of her seat by herself. The ride operators were trying to get her out of her seat, but the other workers weren't notified, so they ended up sending her on the ride again. This time when the ride was done, she was completely unconscious. It literally put her in a coma. She passed away a week later. Now, technically this wasn't Disney's fault. I mean, part of it was. They had a lawsuit filed against them, but it was dismissed because apparently while on the ride, a tumor dislodged from her heart and then traveled to her brain. Yeah, I know, that's super scary. In our third spot, we have the ghost of Walt Disney. So for those of you who don't know, Disney had a secret apartment. It was located just above the firehouse on Main Street, USA. This apartment was built so that he could watch the guests enjoy his creation without being overwhelmed by the crowds. Now, his apartment was so secretive that him and his family and special guests were the only ones allowed in there. In fact, photographers were rarely allowed inside. As a result, there are hardly any photos of Mr. Disney and his family in this place. Well, after the passing of Walt Disney in 1966, cast members decided to place a small lamp at the window. 
They keep the light on to symbolize that Disney spirit is still alive at Disneyland. And this may be indeed true because it's said that his ghost still haunts his apartment. A number of employees have seen Disney while cleaning the apartment. Apparently one worker was in there and then the lights started flickering on and off. Another worker said she heard a voice say, don't forget, I am still here. And that's when she probably quit because that's terrifying. In our second spot, we have Dolly's Dip. So in 1984, Regina, otherwise known as Dolly Young, was riding on the Matterhorn when her seatbelt came undone. She was then thrown from the ride and hit and killed by another bobsled. Now, there's still much debate as to how her seatbelt came undone. Some say that she unbuckled it to help her children who were in another car. Others think that the seatbelt just wasn't buckled properly in the first place. Either way, this accident was super tragic. But that's not all. Now Disney employees claim that Dolly's spirit haunts the ride. The area in which she died is now called Dolly's Dip, and employees hate going there by themselves. Those that do have claimed to feel like someone is watching them. Others say that the lights in Dolly's Dip never work properly anymore. Now everyone kind of just avoids that area at all costs. And in our number one spot, we have the tragic accident. So this story was shared on Reddit by a man who once worked at Disney as a VIP tour guide. So he was in the city hall when two women came in with two little girls. One of the girls was in a wheelchair. The other girl looked very depressed. Both of them had cuts and bruises all over them. The two women with them were nurses from the hospital that the girls had just been to. They were there to ask for a refund for the girls' tickets. Now, here's where the story gets very sad. So apparently the girls had been with their mom and dad at Epcot, but on their way home, they got in a really bad car accident. They both lost their parents in the crash. So the nurses had come to try and get a refund for the tickets so that the girls could get money to try and go home. Now, how dark is that? That's extremely sad. Coming in at number 10, we have the leg. This is a worrying anecdote that was shared on a BuzzFeed article about a horrifying day out at Disneyland. Paige M wrote a worrisome entry about nearly being hit by a flying appendage. She wrote, while riding Everest in Animal Kingdom, I saw an object fly past my head during the drop. When the ride stopped, a man four rows ahead of me raised his hand and informed the cast member that his prosthetic leg had somehow fallen off during the ride. Honestly, oh my god, how did that happen? They had to stop the ride and go and find it. Oh my god, that sounds like quite the close call. Honestly, like being hit in the face with a prosthetic would be pretty stressful at the best of times, but on a roller coaster, I mean, anything that hits you at that speed, you could die. Coming in at number nine, we have Ashes to Ashes. This is a popular urban legend that a number of people have spread their loved ones' ashes at Disneyland. Now, rumor has it that the most popular spot to offer offload ashes is the haunted mansion. Maybe it's someone's final wish to take part in the dance of the dead or something. Although to be honest with you, I'm really really not sure I'd want to be a real ghost in the mansion. I've literally never ever thought about it until this second, but I suddenly realized that I absolutely need my ashes to be spread outdoors. I just can't be inside forever. I'm an outdoor gal. I actually think I'd be more of a sprinkle me around the exterior of the castle kind of turn to ash person. Wow, this has just got really dark really really quickly which I guess is an occupational hazard of working on this channel these days. Spooky. So anyway one first hand eyewitness wrote into People magazine to say while riding Pirates of the Caribbean a few years ago a lady pulled out a bag and dumped the contents into the water. She was crying and sort of laughing at the same time. It soon became clear that she had dumped her husband's ashes in the water as his final resting place. She was caught on camera and did get in trouble but it couldn't be undone. Both creepy and cool at the same time. Honestly, to me, that is absolutely horrifying, watching someone dump their husband's ashes into water that is right next to me. The worst thing that happened to me on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride was that I lost my sparkly mouse ears, although they did get them back. But yeah, ashes. Christ. But oh wait, there is more scary Pirates of the Caribbean drama up next at number eight. So, your ride 
riding along on the Pirates of the Caribbean, ho 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 and a bottle of rum and all of that glorious stuff. As you know, if you've been on the ride, there's a lot of animatronics. There's even an animatronic pirate that looks like Johnny Depp's character, Captain Jack Sparrow. Sure, ok but you're on the ride and today it looks super real and you're thinking like is this frontline Disney tech or is it Johnny Depp? Turns out, sometimes, actually, it is the real life pirate or real life actor. Back in April 2017, he jumped aboard the river cruise attraction in California and gave fans both a fright and a delight. Depp has since revealed he thought it was actually a bad idea. He said, I was very excited to stand stock still and then shout out, Oi, what are you looking at? He told Graham Norton this when he went live on his show. He said, I got no reaction whatsoever, nothing. I had to start describing the people I was shouting at so they knew that I was real. It was exhausting and such a bad idea. I mean, yeah, I can't imagine that. People thought it was fake Johnny Depp and then it was real Johnny Depp. Here's a clip from the incident so you can see him Jack Sparrowing it up. I am. I would like to come and be your Johnny Depp. Everyone jump out into the water. Oh, I'll, be <laughs> Don't do that. I'll just jump in your boat. Hello. Coming in at number 7, we have the crying boy. Could there be anything more distressing than seeing a lost crying child at Disneyland? The place is supposed to be filled with happy children having their best day. It seems a small crying boy has been spotted near the exit of the haunted mansion on multiple occasions by guests and employees. When people have gone over to speak to him and offer him comfort, he's ignored them as if they aren't there. Some even swear he has just vanished into thin air too. I honestly would be really scared. Maybe I would think it would be an extension of the ride, but a crying child that would be pretty messed up. It seems that actually many people think that the boy is a ghost of a child who had their ashes scattered on the ride. Oh my god, and we're back to those ashes again. Please. Why Disneyland? I get it, but like, very stressful. Ok, so you know at the beginning of this video when I said I loved Space Mountain? Well, nobody told me it was haunted. Coming into number 6, we have the ghost hitcher on Space Mountain. This is the story of Mr. One Way, a man who rides Space Mountain but never gets off. So the legend has it that a red haired man who died on the ride in the 1970s can still be spotted on the attraction today and he's looking for company. It is said that he sits up next to single riders, but by the time the ride ends, there's absolutely no sign of him. This has baffled many riders who have sworn that they've been sitting next to someone who seemingly just vanishes from beside them before the ride is over. Can you even imagine? I would like think I was seeing things or freaking out or I don't know, I jolted my head too hard on the ride. It would scare me much harder than the ride's scary drops and the scary moon. For those who don't physically see Mr. One Way, they say that they can feel him behind them or next to them. There have been a number of reports of the hitcher and he may or may not have been caught on camera a couple of times. Check this out. To number five, we have It's a Small World, and I don't think it's okay. I think most scary Disneyland experiences start and end with the It's a Small World ride. The ride is terrifying because, you know, tiny dolls are terrifying, and so are the sounds of children singing, and that really does have both of them. It's a Small World is an OG Disney ride, and there have been many ghost stories and urban legends about its existence. One being that the dolls move of their own accord. Now, one more credible source is author Ridley Pearson, who absolutely swears that he saw the dolls move. He was on a VIP after hours tour and he's convinced that they have a life of their own. Whether or not that's true, I don't know, but I do know that a man was once awarded $8,000 after being stuck on the ride for over 30 minutes and forced to endure the songs over and over and over again. That actually would send me insane. But I have to say, $8,000 for just 30 minutes. Maybe he saw more than he was supposed to. Are the dolls alive? Let me know what you think. Coming in at number 4, we have The Lamp. Imagine what it's like to work at Disneyland. Guests are all Always treated to a very front facing experience. But then imagine working at Disneyland and knowing and seeing everything that goes on behind the scenes, I bet it's really a whole different experience. One member of the cleaning staff had a truly scary experience shortly after Walt Disney died in the mid 1960s. A bit of backstory, Walt used to have an apartment above the fire station on Main Street and he frequently stayed there after the park opened in 1955, he just liked to be around. When he was in residence, it is said that he always kept a lamp burning in the window so everyone knew that he was there. I think that's pretty handy, I wish that there was always a light on when my boss was in the building, it would save me a lot of time. When he died though, the lamp was switched off. Eerily, it seems that the lamp would just 
turn itself back on though. One day a staff member was cleaning the apartment when she heard a voice that said, I'm still here. From that day on, Disney's lamp keeps on burning in the window as a mark of respect and acknowledgement for his continued presence. I've actually seen that lamp with my own eyes. Coming into number 3 we have Dolly's Dip. In Disneyland California it is said that the Matterhorn ride is haunted. Both guests and park employees have felt a presence ever since a woman died on the track in 1984. Dolly Young was said to have unbuckled her seatbelt and stood up in order to assist a child when she was thrown onto the tracks and run over by the next bobsled. It said that during one point of the ride named Dolly's Dip, she can actually sometimes be seen or most often felt. The cold spots that you feel on the ride aren't Disney sticking to the winter alpine theme, it could actually be Dolly. Coming into number 2 we have the dead body of the haunted mansion. In July 2016, a dead man was found in Disney's Phantom Manor in Disneyland Paris. It seems that the corpse belonged to a man who had worked at the park for a whopping 14 years and, sadly, been accidentally electrocuted. The man had been working on lighting just backstage when he died. The ride was stopped immediately and closed down while the body was removed and an investigation into the death began. Honestly, how awful, a haunted house being the scene of an actual death. Finally, coming into number 1, we have the Big Thunder Mountain dramas. Oh dear, there have been two horrifying experiences on Big Thunder Mountain, most recently in 2011 when a train derailed in the Paris Park. A carriage basically derailed and caused trains to collide with one another, and also in the same year, a piece of the rock work fell onto the track in front of a train causing a serious injury. But I have to say the scariest Thunder Mountain experience came in September 2003 in Disneyland California. This was when a train sped through the faux desert landscape and uphill into a tunnel when the cars became separated and the locomotive derailed which is absolutely horrifying. Can you imagine being derailed in the dark? Eyewitnesses said riders climbed from the cars and started running away. Some were screaming for help and one guest heard a man yelling someone is hurt bad, it's really serious, get someone up here. And it was serious, a man, 22 year old Marcelo Torres was actually killed in the accident and 10 others were injured. I can't even imagine something like that happening, not knowing if it's part of the ride or if something's actually gone really really wrong. Imagine being someone who sat next to the dead guy as well, that would ruin Disneyland and just like about everything forever. Whew. 